Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome back to our Unity RPG tutorial series. Now, before we go and add more new elements to the game, we want to make sure that our game is running as smoothly as we, possibly, as we possibly can. So, we're going to fix up a couple of little bugs that exist in our game at the moment, uh, and we're going to add a little bit of an optimization that people have been asking me about, and about how to implement in the game, um, for how the player moves around in the world. So. First of all, I'm just going to show the couple of little bugs that we want to deal with here. So if we start playing the game, one issue we've had for a little while is that when you start the game, your player starts with the sword kind of randomly in the middle of the body. The player's facing down like we want, but the sword is there. But as then as soon as we move, our player will have the right facing and we can move around in the world and that'll all be fine. But we obviously don't want to have that kind of weird way of starting off the game because that really doesn't look good. Uh, and another thing that we want to sort out is an issue we have with dialogue boxes which doesn't occur all the time but occurs sometimes so hopefully we'll be able to replicate it here if I go and talk to this guy here start talking no sometimes there we go so I just clicked the button at the end of that dialogue box and it, it got to the last line and it made the dialogue box go away but then it immediately opened a new copy of the dialog box um, before we could do anything. So we want to fix that so that it doesn't happen because we don't want to get our players just stuck in a loop of talking to these guys, which is obviously no good for us. And those are the two basic little things we want to fix up. And the other thing we want to fix up is our movement and more specifically how we're handling our player moving in a diagonal directions. So. Let's start taking a look at how to do these. So as I said, the first thing we want to deal with is our player starting off facing the wrong way. So if we go in, into our animations, when we start the game, uh, sorry, if we go into our animator, even, our animator window. So when we start the game, we obviously start off being idle. And if we go into that, we have our blend tree here and it has a different direction for each way that we face. So we've got our player facing down, left, right and up. And each one of those is called when our last move value is at a certain number. So we can uh, we can move this around, and we go if we look in the bottom right down down here, we can see our player faces in a different direction, and the the sword moves around in the world as well. And so what's happening is when we start the game, our player is starting off facing down, and the sword is also just starting in the middle of the player because we're at this zero zero value. If we look at our last move. If we just set this to be zero, we have our sword in the middle and it's kind of just looking weird and wrong. It's not what we want to have happen. So what we can do is instead make sure that when we start the game, our last move value is set so that it will start our player facing down in the world. So how can we do that? Well, it's very simple and very straightforward. We need to go into our scripts and go into our player controller script. We'll open this up in Mono Develop here. Uh, just let's catch up for a second. And all we have to do. Oh, we've got an error. Never mind that. That was just a, a weird little Mono Develop error. And basically, all we have to do is in our start function, if we if we just go down to the bottom here, we can see uh, we are setting the float value for our last move x and our last move y. To be equal to our last move variable and we're setting that whenever we get some input and making our player move and what so what we can do is since obviously there'll be no input at the start of the game just straight away in the start function here we can just say okay at this point our last move we are we want that vector to just start off as a new vector 2 and the x value will be 0 and the y value will be minus 1 because minus one is what makes us face downwards. And that's literally all we have to do, and that cures this little bug that we've had in the game for a while now. So we'll just wait for this to compile, and we'll show this in action. Once it finishes going. There we go. And there you go. So straight away you can see, we start off with our sword in the right place, our player's facing down, and we're just we're not creating this little error that's giving us problems within the game. Okay, so that's one thing fixed. Next thing we want to fix is our dialog box, and it's another very very simple fix that we um, 
kind of overlooked a little as we were creating our dialogue manager, but uh, it, it solves this problem that we're having. So if we go to our dialogue manager script, I'm going to actually open a dialogue manager and our dialogue holder as well. We'll open both of these up in here. So just as an example of what's happening. So when we start a new dialogue, we have it down here that our player enters, say, enters a space and he presses the presses the space button down and we're checking when the, the space button is let go, that's when we start doing this dialogue. So that's fine, but then in our dialogue manager, what we have is that when we press the space button down, that's when we move on to the next line of dialogue. So what's happening is, or what is occasionally happening, is not happening every time we are in a conversation with someone because sometimes the character moves and stuff like that. But what we're encountering is that we press the space button down, it moves to the next line, and if that next line is uh, the last line of dialogue, or sorry, if the current line we're on is the last line of dialogue, then it moves to the next line and it says, okay, deactivate uh, the whole script because we have our uh, our thing here to deactivate the script and then what happens is we so we've pressed the space button down and then when we the dialogue box is deactivated in the world so there's no more dialogue active and then when we let our space button go again then back in our dialogue holder what's happened is we're doing the get key up on the space button and it's running through the dialogue uh, it's starting a new dialogue going so that's what happened that, that's what's happening and that's why we're getting this effect and it kind of happens if you're holding the space bar down for a little bit too long basically uh which is obviously not something that you want to be telling your players you can't you couldn't release this into the world and say well you wouldn't have this bug if you didn't hold the space bar down for so long that's not a good way to deal with these things but a much better way to do it is instead of doing this uh, dialogue moving on on get key down what we can change it to is just get key up very simply and very straightforward and now although it was hard to uh, get this dialogue box to actually um, occur in the first place so we can do this test and not encounter this problem but we could equally do this and not encounter the problem even if even if we hadn't fixed it um, but I uh, logically and from my own testing this this is exactly what we want to do in this situation so we can keep talking to this guy oh no we're going the wrong thing so you're not supposed to start a new dialogue until you've exited a, a zone as such so as you can see we're trying to talk to this guy we're trying to get this multiple dialogue box thing happening uh, but it's not happening which is perfect that's exactly what we want to happen so uh, that fixes that a little bug as well and the final thing we want to fix is how we move around within the world along diagonals. So when we first did this, we um, dealt with this in a kind of straightforward and simple way to kind of get the idea behind moving in diagonals along and to get the idea that if you're moving in a diagonal, you kind of want to, you want to have your player actually moving at a different rate. Now, the problem with doing that, if we go back to our player controller script, the problem with doing that is we have all this code here that we're having to check um, having to check if the player is moving a certain amount to either side or if the player is not moving if they're above threshold values and stuff like that and we're setting values for if it's true and down here we're saying uh, if it's if our input is above a certain amount then we should uh, move diagonal and things like that we're kind of overcomplicating it for ourselves. As I said, it was, the idea behind this was to kind of explain this diagonal movement and how we would handle that for our character within the game. But we've kind of moved on from that stage now. So what we can do is actually vastly simplify this and make it much easier to understand. So what we're going to use instead of uh, this kind of speed modifier and stuff is to just use a, a normalized vector. And a normalized vector basically means that no matter which direction the player is pushing, the the kind of length of movement will never be greater than one. It's kind of a hard concept to um, just think of. But let's just quickly, just as an example. So say we have we have a vector and we have a point in the middle. So say that's our player. And then we have 
uh, point 0.1 uh, on the y-axis up, minus 1 down, 1 left or 1 right even, and minus 1 to the left. So what would normally happen if we were the way the way we get input from the player. So if our player is pushing to if we're if we're pressing to the right and also pressing up, then we're getting a, a number of one one, which will put our position up here. So that's like one one on the thing. It's hard to draw with a mouse. Uh, so that's one one up there, and that's why we're getting that's why we would get a faster move speed if we're moving diagonal. But if we were to use a normalized vector, basically what it does is it kind of limits the amount to uh, well that was a terrible it's supposed to be a curve there. But let's just imagine that's a circular curve there. Basically what it does is say, okay, if even if you're pushing all the way to the right and all the way up, the number value won't exceed this point here. So then we get a smooth amount and we actually get our player moving at a constant speed in the game world. And it's a very handy and simple way of doing it. So we're gonna put that into action here. And as I said, we're no longer going to need any of this uh, diagonal stuff. But rather than delete it, we're just going to comment it out for now. So we'll put a slash star in front of it. And then at the end of that bit of code, we put a star slash to comment that whole section out there. And we're also going to comment out all this movement code. Because we don't really need to have all this stuff active. Uh, or not active, but we don't need to have it doing things the same ways we have here. Which is uh, kind of built to handle that diagonal movement. So we're going to comment out all of this here. And then just above where we have our key code at, for an attack uh, being here, we want to come back in. So we'll put a star slash just before that, just so we know we have this bit here active. Okay, so what we'll need to do to get this movement is we need a vector value that we'll use as our movement. So uh, in amongst our kind of movement codes we have here, we're going to create a new private vector2 that we will call our move input. And then down here, so just above our kind of uh, attack input here, we're going to add, we're going to say what our move input should be. So every moment in time, we're going to update this to be, our move input will be a new vector2. We obviously need to take input on the x-axis, which will be our input dot get axis raw on the horizontal axis and on the y-axis we need it to be our input that get axis raw vertical like that so as I said what we want to do is have this be a normalized vector 2 so that we get that kind of smooth arc not something that we will visually see or anything like that but just in terms of the mathematics of it all and um, so we can can't go too much in a diagonal direction basically so what we'll do is just simply add dot normalized like that at the end and put our semicolon and what we're saying then is whatever input we have we want that to be normalized so that it'll be a, our player can only move in a smooth certain amount so now that we've captured that input we need to apply it to our rigid body but we don't want to apply it to a rigid body the whole time only if we're actually getting some input so we can say if um, our move input is not equal to a vector 2.0. So a vector 2.0 is simply has an x and y value of 0, 0. So as long as we're not getting 0, 0 on our input, which would be our player not moving at all, as long as that's not true, well then we want to apply these forces to our rigid body. So we'll say my rigid body dot velocity is equal to a new vector2 with move input dot x multiplied by our move speed so when we created uh, our, our diagonal movement we created this whole modifier of using a current move speed which would be our move speed multiplied by diagonal move modifier but we don't need to deal with that we can just go back to dealing with just our pure uh, move speed so we can say our move input dot x by move speed and our move input dot y by move speed like that so that's fine if we have input that's what we want it to be but of course if we don't have any input so else 
If we don't have any input, then we want to make sure that our player isn't moving around in the world. So we'll say my rigid body dot velocity equals vector two dot zero. Very simply and very straightforward. Now, of course, there's a couple of other things we need to add. If we just look back up at our code up here, we had a bool for our, if our player is moving because that's something we need to use for our animator. So we know that if we're getting input, what well, our player should be moving. So we should have we make sure that our player moving is still setting to be true. And then to make sure that we know which way we're facing within the world, we have to remember to set our last move variable. So here we can say, OK, our last move should be equal to. Uh, uh, sorry, not not uh, I was trying to add the right, wrong, wrong thing there, but just we should say our last move should be equal to whatever our move input is. Very simple and very straightforward. So we can save that now and then we can go back into our game. Let that compile for a couple of seconds. Once it catches up. And now effectively you shouldn't see much difference with how we were moving around in the world. But now if we move down here, we can see if we move to in the diagonal, Oh, we walk into the space zone there. Uh, but we can see as we move around, no matter which diagonal we move in, we're still going in a kind of smooth and constant speed. So if we were, for example, just to go to our player, no matter what changes we make to our speed, our move modifier here, they no longer have any effect on the player as we move around. And in essence, it's not something we need to do anymore. So it's a it's a simpler and more straightforward way to deal with our movement code. Um, it's not something, as I said, you could tell there, it's not something that the player necessarily will feel any difference in. But it is something, when you're doing your own code, you want to keep things as simple as possible. So rather than having this whole big chunk up here and this little bit here, instead we've got this nice little short bit that can handle all our needs in our game. So uh, I'm just gonna make sure and get rid of our diagonal move modifier. I'm just gonna comment it out because there's no point in completely re removing code for the moment. Uh, but we don't need to have it active on our player controller script here. So we'll just make sure and delete it like that. And that's basically it. So that's for, for the moment, that's a couple of little bugs and little fixes for our game. And now we can feel free to start adding a few more interesting dynamic uh, stuff into the game coming up very soon. So thanks for watching. I'll see you all in the very near future. Thanks for watching this episode. And if you want to learn more about developing your own games, you can follow the link on screen to my complete 2D platformer game development course on Udemy, where you will learn how to program and build a complete game in Unity 2D with multiple levels, enemies, and unique boss battles. So click the link on screen or in the description below and get the course today.